It's an exciting moment for the Bearded Butchers here at White Feather Meats. We hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube, and thanks to all of you that helped us to get there. Really incredible. Appreciate everybody following along. And to celebrate, we've got something special. What better cut of meat can you get than an A5 Wagyu tenderloin? We ordered one in. I'm going to go grab it. Seth's going to trim it up, and we're going to celebrate. Dun, 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 dun. We've got a Japanese A5 certified Wagyu whole tenderloin, and we're going to celebrate. Over to you, big bro. I'd love to I do know the you honors. Make something great out of that. Certificate of authenticity. That's what came with this <clears throat> whole Wagyu tenderloin. We've never actually made a video specifically for how to trim a whole tenderloin. A tenderloin, tenderloin like this is available in your local grocery store. If you don't know how to trim one for steaks, today we're gonna show you. Be careful when you open the packaging that you don't cut into the meat. Some mistakes I've seen people make is where they take a knife and they just zip down through the packaging, not realizing that they just made a big cut in the meat below. So just be careful that you don't, don't cut into that meat. Just go ahead and just get this out of this packaging. And I, I can already tell this has some really nice fat. And I can see the, the lines of marbling inside it as well. Look at that beauty. You can see those nice strips of marbling in there. I know when we get this cut, it's just gonna be incredible. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna remove this chain. This is considered a pismo. Peel, or the, the side muscle's on, so we wanna peel it. So you just start by getting your fingers underneath that side muscle. A lot of this can just be done by hand. You don't wanna, obviously you don't wanna remove a lot of that meat with it. So if you need to use your knife just a little bit to work it off there, you can. So just start up here at the top, removing some of that gristle. Once you get that loosened up a little bit, you can just apply a little bit of pressure, a little bit of knife work, and just peel that whole side muscle right off there. This portion, trim this out, grind it up, make some delicious A5 burgers. Now that we have that side muscle off, it's gonna do a little bit more trimming on here. Probably the most challenging part of trimming out a whole tenderloin is removing this silver skin right here. I'm going to show you how we do it. So make sure things are nice and flat. Take the tip of your knife, of course, Victorinox six inch boning knife is what we prefer. Get the tip of your knife underneath that silver skin and just start trimming it off like this. Just making sure that when you take it off there, you don't leave any of that precious meat on there. And this right here is just fat, so that part's okay. You want to just, there's always a little bit of gristle down here. So you just want to go down both sides of it. Trimming it out like that. A little bit more work right here. Just take a moment and look at that marbling. Gorgeous. This is where you want to just make sure you don't put a bunch of hack slashes in it. A bunch of unwanted, undesirable looking cuts. There's always just a little bit of gristle right here that you can remove as well.
Always a little chunk of fat right here. Personal preference, it's up to you. I think today, since that Wagyu fat's so delicious, we're gonna leave that on there. But what you have here is a whole tenderloin ready to get cut into steaks. Kai Farms A5 Wagyu Tenderloin. We're gonna cut this into fillets. This is probably my most favorite part of cutting a tenderloin, is cutting into these individual pieces, seeing what that marbling looks like on the inside. So we're just gonna start up here at the, at the end, cutting a nice two inch or so size chunk. And we'll just go down through here. Look at that. If you think of ways to celebrate a million subscribers on YouTube, I'm not so certain that there's a better way than this. There's a little bit of that fat that I was talking about that I left on there. These, these center cuts right here, these, these are where this is, is really gonna shine. You can see the marbling actually gets a little bit more intense the further we go down through here. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's just prop these all up so you can see them. Look how gorgeous that is. Incredible marbling. I have no doubt that the flavor and the melt in your mouth tenderness is going to be just spot on. So when you buy fillets in the store, I just want to go over something real quick. This is your, this is your butt end of the tenderloin. These have these little wing pieces on the, on the edge of them. So if you, if you want to look at the difference between the two, this is your butt end. This would be your center cut. And then these would be the tip. So. If you buy a whole tenderloin like this, you want to cut steaks, you're not quite sure what to do with a piece like this. Maybe it's a little bit thinner, uh, less desirable. Maybe you want to cook it for a guest or something like that. By all means, you can cut this into stir fry. You can cook this as a steak. It's completely up to you. But I just wanted to go over real quick the different pieces of the whole tenderloin. So we have the butt, the center, and then the tip. So just to clarify that. We're going to get these cooked up for celebration. And to do that, we're going to use our black blend mixed with some Brock Lesnar blend. The black blend, molasses, a little bit of coffee, pairs phenomenal with red meats. The Brock, it has those granulars, a little bit salt forward, has the, the onion, a little bit of fennel. I know it's going to be delicious. I'm going to dump these out on the board here. So I just want to show you what these look like in comparison side by side. So you can see what I'm talking about with these spices. You can see the granulars in there. It's got the black pepper. It's got the garlic. There's some fennel mixed through there. The black has that, that darker, you can see the coffee. So you can, you can see the difference between the two, but we're actually gonna take them and we'll, we'll mix them on the steak. So those are the spices that we're using. We're gonna get the charcoal grill fired up. We're gonna get these cooking and we're gonna celebrate. That's an incredible display. We're headed to the grill.
Got this side. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> Are you talking? We made it to the grill. I did the cutting. Scott's gonna do the cooking. We have these awesome A5 fillets. As you saw, Scott, pressure's on. I'm gonna pick two of those out of there. Let's get cooking. Two center cut, beautiful Kai Wagyu filet mignons. We're gonna do a little bit of both black and Brock blend seasoning on that. That's one of the things that we like to do is just a light coating of each and it brings in both flavor profiles. So we've got that deep dark richness with the, the coffee and molasses that's in our black blend. And then we're gonna put some of that bold garlic salt base from the Brock blend. Now we're gonna go pretty light because we want to make sure that we have plenty of beef flavor coming through. So there's where you get those nice granulars. Really see that spice. We'll, uh, no cook would be complete without Scott's hot tip. We'll just dab up those spices. Now this is a thick center cut, so We've got all four surfaces coated. We're gonna go on to the grill on our indirect side. Let those start smoking, come up to temperature, and then we can sear them off on the back. Sorry, Charlie, not so sure. All right. Now we go down for that sizzle. Direct over the coals. Get that nice char on the outside. It's gonna be amazing. Seared up. And looking amazing. Get just get a load of that crisscross stuff. Do you think you could have done that? I'm certain he could have. I'm just messing with you. Time to get these puppies off. Let them rest. There's one thing I know I can do, and that's taste them. Yes. Tasting coming right up. All right. Smells good, Spencer. Look at this. It's time to go ahead and just. Oh my goodness. Look at the look at the juices. Seth, get yourself one there. I don't mind if I do. Cheers. Best way to celebrate our 1 million subscribers is with what we consider the best bite of meat that you can get. A Kai Farms Wagyu tenderloin. Bon appetit. Congrats, bro. Same. Congrats. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. That is amazing. No butter needed on that. That flavor, it's got that nice crust on there and then those flavors just melt together. And the juice is literally just dripping Absolutely out Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Seth's hot tip. There you go. Well, it's time to get our, our team to celebrate with us. We're gonna cut up some slices here. Everybody can jump in here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna. Oh, oh yep, get in there, Spencer. One. <laughs> Watch those fingers. Get your little paws in there, guys. Mm. So there you have it, what we do to celebrate is find what we consider the top of the line. Seth trimmed it up, we seasoned it up, we grilled it up. It's absolutely amazing. We wanna thank you, each one of you that subscribed, everyone that supports us. A big thank you from the Beard of Butchers, America's Butchers. Couldn't have done it without you. Fantastic, thanks guys. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.